Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. My name is Ace and I got more TF2 coverage here for you. Going to be talking about the balance changes because a lot of you guys, a lot of you guys, have been asking of me to make a balance video, basically a video about the balance changes. Well, here we are. And I'm not just going to be a generic idiot and at this stage of the patch, you know, just call out the patch notes and call it a day. What I'll be doing is I'll be telling you guys what the balance changes are, but in addition to that also have gameplay connected to these changes in the background as well as my opinion, my perspective, my point of view. So it's a little bit more unique than just the generic stating of facts. I was going to be more focused of course on different videos which I already have brought out. And if you are interested in finding out what I did as my main focus of this patch, you know, links below to all the new weapons and gameplay for all the new weapons as well as a comparison video between stock and all the new weapons for those classes in split screen. So I would really like if you guys check that out as well. But otherwise, without further ado, let's dive into the pyro. And the pyro changes are rather interesting. 10% more base damage to every single flamethrower. Sounds, sounds powerful, doesn't it? It actually isn't. First of all, the stock flamethrower is the only flamethrower that's worth using that actually gets a straight up damage buff because of this. The degreaser actually ends up getting no damage change at all because even though all flamethrowers get 10% more base damage, the penalty on the degreaser that has been added with this patch is 10% less damage. So it basically remains the same amount of damage before the patch. Same thing with the backburner. Nothing changes because the backburner had 10% damage buff as an actual stat for the backburner. But that gets removed. So the damage remains the same as well. The flog still gets 10% damage if I'm not mistaken. But on top of that also gets tweaked to the damage reduction that happens when he taunts. Or she, or it, I don't know, I still don't know. So what happens is, you can basically chip a little bit more health off the pyro when that damage reduction is up when he or she or it is taunting. Besides that, I still think that the degreaser is still the flamethrower to go with, because if you have looked at my pyro videos that I've made in the past, you can definitely see that being able to switch your weapons faster you know, allows you to kill faster, allows you to reflect faster, and reflecting being a very important part of being a good pyro, you kind of get where this is going. So without further ado, the next class, the Medic, and I love the Medic changes, I really do. Quick Fix now allows you to mirror the jump of either the Soldier or the Demo. And as you can see on the screen, I am jumping around like crazy with either the Demo or the Soldier, of course. And this is amazing, because now this means that the Quick Fix is now actually useful. And it also allows you to do so much more with strategy. Imagine if a demo or a soldier, you know, that usually flank people, now flank people with a medic with them. Imagine how much stronger of a flank you will have or, you know, catch people off guard while having a medic with them. It's so much more powerful, so much strategies are now more valuable or more valid to use. It's definitely going to be used quite a bit, I hope, and I will be definitely be looking forward to it to actually be using it myself because I really... I really enjoyed it. The crossbow, on the other hand, is also an amazing change. 40% faster reload speed. And I already loved the crossbow to begin with. I already got some very nice shots with it, of course, in the past. But now being able to shoot 40% faster, it's insane. We already saw this bow being used, of course, or this crossbow being used in competitive play, you no, know, on a rare occasion. But with this powerful buff, I am certain it go it's going to be popping up a lot more and I will be definitely making a video about it where I hopefully get a lot of nice hits in mid-air for example or just from a very large distance which may kill or heal depending on which target I'm going to be hitting so I'm looking forward to that as well really like the medic changes really liking them of course the cozy camper now some of you already saw my cozy camper video when it came out and I bashed that item into the ground I really basically nerd raged on the stupidity of this item and it has been it has been buffed a bit it has now gotten one health per second uh, you basically regen one health per second as a sniper and on top of that you are 10 percent less slow while you're scoped in instead of 90 percent it's now 80 percent so my general opinion it's still shit you should still burn this weapon and never look back because one health per second is not going to change the fact that if you are going to be moving around like you're basically standing still, a headshot is still going to kill you. You know, one health per second is not going to change that. Projectiles are still going to be 
blowing your face off because you are barely moving. Of, of course you can most likely live a little bit longer while you're burning, but when a pyro gets to you or a scout gets to you or a spy gets to you, you have nothing to change to besides your main rifle. You have no Jurati, you have no SMG, and those are the two weapons that are 10 times more valuable in any situation than the Cozy Camper. Anyone that justifies the Cozy Camper is in my eyes a idiot. Unless they're messing about with it, then I can see why. But if they are serious about this weapon, this misc, it's basically a misc in my eyes. It's a misc because it looks fantastic, but it has shit stats, so they should make it a misc. But if they are serious about this as a weapon, then I can't take you serious. I am sorry, it's horrible. Moving on to the, uh, well, the sticky jumper and the rocket jumper. No real stat changes here, but they have added a flying sound. And this basically means that when you jump with either the sticky jumper or the rocket jumper, you can hear the wind passing next to your ears. That's basically the sound, that's the flying sound. But I don't, I'm, I'm not sure why this is a balance change, because there's no buff or nerf on them. But... It is how it is, and it's it's a nice gimmick. It's definitely uh, a lot more relaxing and a lot more fun while you're now jumping with it. But besides that, nothing really changes. So, nice gimmick, but that's about it. Of course, the scout. Now, this is interesting because the scout's Criticola has been buffed quite, quite hard, in fact. Not only is the duration increased with 2 seconds from 6 to 8, it also means you are going to be walking 25% faster while it's active. And that's the main part. This means you can roll out faster. This means you can be a lot more annoying. And it kind of makes sense because even though the Criticola makes you more powerful, it also makes you more vulnerable. And the whole philosophy of the Scout is, of course, even though he's very powerful and very vulnerable, his strength lies within his speed and his ability to dodge stuff. So making himself more vulnerable and then also becoming more faster to you know, dodge things kind of makes sense in his philosophy or in the philosophy of the class. So I'm really liking the buff. I really like what they have done with it and I'll definitely be sure to use it in a future video as well because I'm alright with, right with the scout being really fast. I'm okay with that. And of course the uh, the atomic bonk has been increased as well, the duration at least, from 6 to 8. So this means you can get past enemies through sentries a little bit easier, especially when you're being spawn killed, for example. You have two more seconds to get behind them and distract them, or perhaps just straight up cut off their supply line of reinforcements, if you know what I mean. So definitely worth checking that out as well, and definitely a straight up buff. Now we're almost through all the classes, going to the soldier, and the soldier has a buff and a nerf to several weapons. First of all, the Conqueror, as you can already see on the screen. Basically, the Conqueror was a weapon that was never used because it was horrible. Now they've changed from damage done and damage received to only damage done. So that's quite bi quite nice because it's easier to, you know, do damage than survive damage taken sometimes. So that's a lot better. And on top of that as well... The rage that is required to trigger the Conqueror is now increased, at least its gain is increased with 25%. So you can already tell on the screen, it's a lot easier to get that AoE buff that allows you to heal. Basically, it's a, a, a vampiric ability, basically. You do damage and you heal, but it's an AoE. So that is quite nice and it's definitely worth checking out, especially if you, now with the barrage as well, you can definitely heal yourself back up if you get some very nice hits up with that as well as your team will be a lot more powerful for a few seconds. Definitely a lot more useful now. The Equalizer has been nerfed. The Equalizer, as we know it, has been split up in two weapons. The Equalizer and the Escape Plan. And the Equalizer is basically still uh, basic, uh, the same philosophy. You get, more, uh, you get more damage, you become low health, something happens. If you use the Equalizer, you become more powerful with doing damage, where if you have the Escape Plan, you become faster. So those two attributes have basically been split up. And I still think that the escape plan is the weapon to use for me personally. Because I always use the equalizer to get out. Not to get in when I'm about to die. Unless I am certain that I'm going to die. And I kind of figured I'd do more damage anyway. Try to do some damage or possibly even get a kill. But in my eyes the escape plan is a bit better. Because not only can you still do normal melee damage. You can also run a lot faster. Where, of course, the equalizer only does more damage, but does, does not allow you to run faster. So, that's my two cents on that. So, 
moving on to the last class, which is the heavy. And I am also pleasantly surprised with the heavy changes. Not only can you roll out a lot safer now, it also has a, uh, a very interesting change of play with the gloves of burning urgently. Like I already said, it's a lot easier to roll out now, even if you have uh, no medic at all, because you don't get the damage over time anymore. Basically what happens right now is you get the mark of death on you, which means you will take mini crits. Which is very dangerous, but if you are just rolling out, nothing really matters, because you are rolling out, nobody's gonna hit you. Especially at the beginning of the match, so you can roll out a lot easier, be at full health when you go into the battle. But you have to be careful, because it takes 3 seconds after your weapon switch for the mark of death to disappear. So preemptively switch your weapons, as you can already see on the screen of course, it takes 3 seconds for the mark of death to disappear. But beyond that, you are good to go, and it's amazing. It's it's a really good change for rolling out a heavy. But also the attack damage that you are having with the gloves of running urgently has been reduced by 25%. So that makes sense, but I never really used the attack damage with the gloves anyway, because I got a bloody minigun. On top of that, the Tomislav has been nerfed as well, which was to be expected. Tomislav was really good, and everybody hated that weapon. Because the spin-up time was way too fast, and now it is basically nothing, because it has been nerfed to 10%. So, if it's really worth to use the Tommy Slayer, I don't think so, because the normal minigun doesn't suffer from the damage penalty the Tommy Slav has, which of course is the, uh, the lesser amount of bullets you will shoot with the Tommy Slav, while the minigun shoots more bullets. And of course you basically spin up a little bit faster, 10% exactly, but a normal heavy already jumps anyway to keep momentum, and the moment you land on the ground, even with the normal minigun, you already start shooting. So would you sacrifice that amount of damage to be able to shoot 10% faster? In my eyes, I, won't th I don't think so. I still think the minigun is definitely a lot better now. But it also means that everything is a little bit more on par with each other. So that said, we are pretty much done with every single balance change to the game. It, you know... Let me know what you guys think of all these changes. I think overall that this patch has been very, very good for the balance of TF2. I really think it's a, it's a good step in the right direction. I really enjoy the, the changes, but I could be wrong. I But then again, I do my perspective may be different, my opinions may be different. Let me know in the comment section below. And what do you guys think about the patch in general now it has been stabilized for a bit? Let me know and I will catch you guys next time and take care and be safe because it's weekend and I know that some guys like to, um, or women, like to drink alcohol a lot. Yeah.